This video is sponsored by Hotspot Shield, a VPN to protect your privacy, data, and freedom to browse censored websites. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and in this video, I'm gonna be installing this into my Mac Pro, my late 2013 Mac Pro. This is a crucial memory upgrade. Now this is 32 gigabytes of memory, a big, big thank you to Crucial Technology for sending this out. Now, just to let you know, it's gonna go into this. This is my late 2013 Mac Pro sitting on the desk here behind me. And the Mac Pro that I purchased is a mid-tier model. It came with 16 gigabytes of RAM already installed. And I ran a Geekbench 3 benchmark on it when I, when I first set it up. And the single core performance was 3,550. The multi-core performance was 20,355. And then specific to the memory performance, we got a single core score of 3,184. And for multi-core, 5,185. So in this video, I'm gonna actually show you how to install the memory, and then I'm gonna run that Geekbench 3 benchmark again. So at the moment, you're seeing the rear panel of the Mac Pro. Uh, this is the IO panel where you've got all the USB ports and Thunderbolt 2 ports. And the first thing we're gonna do is unlock the outer casing. We've got this switch just to the sort of top left of the IO panels. It's in the locked position at the moment. And we're gonna slide this across to the right to the unlocked position. And then that allows us then to remove the outer casing. Very, very simple to remove. And then once this is removed, you can then see all the internal workings of the Mac Pro. So if I just turn this round, this is the first bank of memory modules. This is banks three and four. And there's a four gigabyte RAM module in each slot. And then if I turn this round, you'll get to see one of the graphics cards. And then if I turn it around again, you'll get to see the second graphics card. This one looks a little bit different because it's got the 512 gigabytes of flash storage installed in this sort of box on the front here. And then if I turn all the way around here, you'll see memory banks one and two. Now it's advised on the Apple website not to mix and match different memory modules. So to upgrade this from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes, I'm gonna remove all the existing modules first and then replace them just with the two 16 gigabyte modules that Crucial Technology sent us. So we move back around to this one. First of all, this is banks three and four. These are gonna be left empty after I've done the upgrade. So we've got a little button at the top here with a little arrow. We're gonna push this in, and this actually releases the memory modules on this sort of hinged mechanism, very, very nicely designed. And the first thing we're gonna do is just remove these two. So we're just gonna ease this out of the top, and then at the bottom, and that's the first one removed. And then we're going to remove the one at the back again, just ease it out of the top, and then at the bottom, and then we will remove that one. Now, the reason I'm leaving these two slots empty is according to Apple's guidelines, if I was only installing 12 gigabytes of RAM, so three four gigabyte modules, I would install them in banks one, two, and three and leave four empty. So I'm assuming that for best performance, installing two modules, I'm just gonna install them in banks one and two. Well, this is banks three and four, so I'm gonna leave those completely empty and just close that door back up. And now we're moving round to this bank of memory modules, this one here. So we're gonna do the same again. We're going to just push the button and that lets the little sort of hinged door mechanism swing out. And then we're just gonna remove this one first, the front one first, just ease it out of the top. And then it removes like so. And then again, we're going to remove the back one, just ease it out of the top. And then it removes like so. So that's all of the existing memory actually removed. And now we're gonna grab one of the new modules. Now it only goes one way up, so we've got less of the gold contacts at the bottom edge of the module. And then we're just gonna do the back one first. So we're gonna guide this in to the slot mechanism, like so, and that should line up. And then we're just gonna ease this in. So again, little pushing at the bottom first, and then at the top, sort of a tiny little sort of seesaw movement just to get that pushed into place. And then we're going to do the front one. And again, we're just going to line this up with the slots and just ease this in to position. And then again, once it's in position, we're just going to make sure that everything's located nicely. Now there is a little bit of movement as I'm pushing these. You can see the whole sort of door just moving very slightly. But I'm just making sure that these are seated correctly, which they seem to be. And then I'm just going to 
ease this back into place just by pushing on this top section here and the bottom section and it clicks back into place. And now I'm ready just to replace the cover and we'll get everything connected back up. So this is again very, very easy to replace. We just line it up like so. And then once it's down into position, we just give it a little push just to make sure it's seated properly and then lock that switch back into the locked position. So I now have the Mac Pro back up and running and you can see here in the About This Mac panel, I've gone into the memory section and it does in fact register that we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM installed in slots one and two. There are two slots still available, so at a later date, I could increase the memory to a total of 64 gigabytes. And now I'm gonna run the Geekbench 3 benchmark again. Now I'm running the very latest version of Geekbench, version three, you can see here it's picked up the processor speed, the fact that we got the 32 gigabytes installed, and I'm also gonna be running the Intel 64-bit version. Now the reason I do this with a camera rather than using ScreenFlow is I don't wanna be taking up any system resources at all. I would normally use the ScreenFlow screen capture application to do this, but because I'm running a benchmark, I prefer to actually capture this on camera. So let's hit run benchmarks, and whilst it's running through the tests, I'll just recap on those scores again. So with the previous 16 gigabytes of standard RAM that comes installed on the six core version of the 2013 Mac Pro, we got a single core score of 3,550, and multi-core was 20,355. Memory specific scores for single core was 3,184 and for multi-core was 5,185. Now don't forget that these are just numbers. The real world performance that you're gonna gain from a memory upgrade is far greater than that. Things are gonna run a lot smoother. You're not gonna get any sort of spinning beach balls when memory is being paged. It's just gonna make everything run a lot sweeter. And I'm gonna be able to run a lot more applications at the same time without running into sort of delays or anything. So we're almost up to the end of the Geekbench rerunning running through its tests again. Uh, my prediction is we might see a little bit of a drop in overall performance and maybe a tiny little bit of gain on the memory performance. That's my prediction, so let's see if I'm correct. So we're almost there. It's running the final test now. Very exciting actually to get this from Crucial Technology. They make fantastic Mac memory and it's guaranteed compatible with your system. They've got a really great configuration option on their website to make sure that you get the correct memory for your system. So here we go, the scores are in. Now, this is the surprise here. On the single core score, Previously, it was 3,550, and now it's gone up to 3,591. And the multi-core score has decreased slightly from 20,355 previously to 20,040. Now let's just scroll through slowly so you can see some of the other scores before we get down to the uh, memory-specific scores. So I'll just do this slowly so you get to see them. So now we're on to the memory specific scores. Now previously the single core performance was 3,184 and now it is 3,108 and the multi-core score is taking a big drop actually so it just goes to prove that these numbers don't really mean that much in real world terms. Multi-core previously was 5,185 and now it's dropped down to 3,919. But overall, the performance, I had a little play with this before I recorded this section of the video, and the overall performance has increased a great deal. I think it is a really good upgrade because you can really feel it when you're using your applications. Things just move along at a much snappier rate and you don't get any of the paging of memory that you might previously do when you're working on larger projects. So that's it for my memory upgrade. This was a 32 gigabyte memory upgrade supplied to me by Crucial Technology. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna see another video of mine, please do click the annotation on the top of your screen now. And also you can click the annotation on the bottom of your screen and subscribe to the Geekanoids channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.